The last video, I made this bowl, this dish, with the hot glue gun technique on the back. And at the end of the video, I asked you whether or not we should keep it or kill it. Now, 5,000 of you said, keep it. But 6,600 of you said, kill it. So, we're gonna kill it. So there we have it, a fleur-de-lis, I think is how you pronounce it. Why did I cut out a fleur-de-lis? We're gonna burn this with the blowtorch. Um, the Japanese actually have a name for this, uh, shogiban. Honestly, I think that's elevating a process that seems to me to be pretty simple. If you want to use the artisan name, you're welcome to. I honestly think we could just call this wood burning. of this was just to see whether or not this was actually going to work. Whether or not the template would actually hold the pattern or whether it would just burn up. Oh, look at that. That actually worked pretty well. Let's jump it up and do it on a bit of a larger scale. So this is a cutout that I did. It was the very first thing I did on my scroll saw. I didn't do a great job if you look closely at the details, but I think it'll be perfect for this technique. Pretty sure I've got somewhere around 300 hours in Skyrim. I played through as a member of the Stormcloaks and I started again as an Imperial because once you're done, you want to start over. <laughs> Talos be praised. Let me get the spatula here. Oh, we lost a little detail in the neck. I definitely think that the template needs to be something thick because this area looks great and actually so do these little guys. Um, but you can see the fire actually, the charring actually got underneath the neck there. So here's the fleur de lis. I don't know, I think it's really cool looking. I really like this look, so I think it's got a really interesting look to it. And it's um, pretty simple to do if you've got a scroll saw or, or something else that can cut out these patterns. Cut out a pattern, a relief, get a really cool piece. <laughs> This is actually called a tiger torch. Okay. They use it for roofing and for burning weeds. That's and surprisingly cool. enough, it wasn't illegal in California. <laughs> That's awesome. I was playing around this technique called uh, Shou Shou Shugi Ban Shou Shugi Ban Shou Shou Shugi Ban So I thought maybe we could try doing that on the bottom of the bowl. And maybe we can both kill it and don't Keep try it. this at home. We're in a controlled environment. We are, we've got the garage door open. Um, there's a fire extinguisher and uh, there's competent adults. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even paint a torch? Yeah, why wouldn't it just be metal? Huh? Huh? Okay, that's cool looking too. Like that. Well, here, we'll switch sides. There we go. Okay, walk by. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You, don't mess, you won't mess with me, I right? Don't mess with me. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the lights. Okay. That seems good. I mean, 
and there's definitely still red over here. On this edge? Yeah, so. Oh, I see it. Oh, it's pretty cool looking. Oh, yeah, I don't know, that's a really cool contrast now between the burned wood and the finished wood. Thank you very much for the help. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We didn't actually kill it, but we did burn it a lot. I ended up sealing the back with lacquer so you didn't get any soot on your hands, but it really preserves the look of this. Once the wood is charred like this, it is actually less likely to catch on fire, so they actually use it for siding. And two, because it's an interesting looking finish. And three, I believe, because it's super fun to do. A crack developed in the middle here, where the two boards were glued together, uh, and I was going to try and fix it. I think that'll end up detracting from it. It's really interesting already. And now the bowl is actually quite striking, even on this edge here. And I like the contrast between the very finished inside and the charred outside. This just became a really cool bowl and I'm probably gonna end up keeping it. I get a lot of comments from folks asking me to make more frequent videos, which just isn't feasible for me right now, but I am very active on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And in addition, I'm posting articles on my website fairly frequently. Most recently, there's an article on there from the Scroll Saw Scribbler, buying your first scroll saw, where he outlines tips for doing so. Something I wish I'd have done before purchasing my scroll saw. I also have a series on there called Let's Talk YouTube, where I sort of just give advice as to what I've learned for the last three years of doing this. If that sounds interesting to you, I'll put the links down in the description for that. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.